I mean, you should have consulted Feige. That's what you should have done. Uh, the, you know, I mean, there, I know that everybody has mixed feelings about Feige now, and I get that, I get that. He would have done a much better job. What they should have done was had Feige just take a break from Marvel for a moment. Just for a few months. Get it, get it rolling in the right direction. Or even a year. Give him a year. You know, run the MCU in a, in a, on an, an auxiliary capacity. You know, remote for a minute. Just to help get things going. I mean, he probably would have... He probably would have talked to George and got something going that would have probably made all parties happy. Oh man, I, I would love to read... I would love to read those... Those... Uh, the outlines that George had. I bet you they're 8 million times better than this trash that we got, man. Release the Lucas cut. <laughs> Release the Lucas cut, damn it. I did want to give a shout out to uh, Ichibaka. I did back uh, the Indiegogo uh, for Disney Star Wars is Dumb. If you haven't done it yet, uh, I think the minimum is like 25 bucks. It's worth it if you can afford if you can afford it. It's worth it at this point. We've got to support him. Uh, he is documenting the stupidity and asinine um, uh, behaviors of horrific Hollywood elites who think that they know better than us, who want to control our myths and our wonderful stories and change everything and destroy everything that we have known and grown up with and they want to um just in all of subvert all in the name of subversion and for the destruction of everything we know so that they can have their uh socialist communist ways and i am not about to let that let that happen so do support ichibaka hopefully you're with me here on this and support ichibaka on this and click the link below i'm going to put it in the description here it's a it's a well uh thought out and uh worthy effort this guy knows what he's doing and he is a wonderful wonderful g um he's a he is a journal he's a real journalist him and both data racer 117 are both real journalists in an ocean of non-journalists he knew that I was going to stand firm on create question of, on the question of creative control, but it wasn't an easy thing for him to accept. And so he reluctantly agreed to be available to consult with us at our request. I mean, like, why did you fuck, man? Why did you why did you sell it? I promised that we would be open to his ideas. This was not a hard promise to make. Of course, we would be open to George Lucas's ideas, but like the outlines, we would be under no obligation. On revealing to George, they weren't following his plot outlines. Early on, Kathy brought uh, JJ and Michael Arndt up to North Northern California to meet with George at his ranch and talk about their ideas for the film. George immediately got upset as they began to describe the plot and it dawned on him that we weren't using one of the stories he submitted during the negotiations. Like, why would you even think that they would do that? The truth was Kathy, JJ, Allen, and I had discussed the direction in which the saga should go and we all agreed that it wasn't what George had outlined. George knew we weren't contractually bound to anything, but he thought that our buying the story treatments was a ta was a tacit promise that we'd uh, that we'd follow him, them, and he was disappointed that his story was being discarded. So interesting, yeah. So they bought it, they purchased his his outline. Like I I'd, I'd been so this is uh, why did you even let it go? Why did you you should have? Uh, I'd been so careful since our first conversation not to mislead him in any way. And I didn't think I had now, but I could have handled it better. I should have prepared him for the meeting with JJ and Michael and told him about our conversations, that we felt it was better to go in another direction. Yeah, I mean, that's that's all fine and dandy. You, you should have, like, explained it. I mean, you should have consulted Feige. That's what you should have done. Uh, the, you know, I mean, there, I know that everybody has mixed feelings about Feige now, and I get that, I get that. Oh man, I, I would love to read, I would love to read those, 
those uh, the outlines. Release the Lucas cut. <laughs> Release the Lucas cut. Damn it. Um, pretty freaky that this is happening, and pretty freaky that we get to see this right before episode nine. Like, I mean, I I get it. You're just you're just out of touch. Once again, you're out of touch. You're out of touch. You don't get it. So once again here, um, once again in this same interview, uh, Bob Iger talking about um, how much he wants to get rid of uh, the other white men who are in his, who are, you know, answer to him. So he, he basically, he's probably going to fire a bunch of people who have been there with the company for a long time, probably smart people, probably people who work really hard and uh, given, you know, the diversity thing. You know, I think... It's for anyone to sit there and call us and say us, call us out and say that anyone is for against diversity. No one's against diversity. But you have to work for what you get. You don't get a, a pass because of your particular anything. No one should. Why would you ever get that? That's, that's discrimination. That's, you know, that's racism. That's all these stupid things. Um, and he's gonna clean house. He's gonna get rid of all these people, and you know he'll be praised for it. That that's, you know, that's his own thing. To do do what you gotta do. Um, but uh, you're a hip you're a total hypocrite. So why don't you, as Jeremy would have said, of Geeks and Gamers, why don't you be the man, be the change you want to see, and step down yourself for someone of of uh, who's not a white man, huh? Why don't you do that, Mr. Iger? Hmm? Congratulations, Mr. Iger, on being an idiot. Palpatine will have an entire fleet of Death Stars in Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Though according to the latest rumors, Episode 9 will empower Emperor Palpatine and an, and with an entire fleet of Death Stars, and they'll be controlled by the Blood Red Sith Troopers. <sighs> more bigger, more bigger. That's what JJ says. That's that's his that's his direction. That's what he says every, after every scene when he directs. More bigger, more bigger, more bigger, more bigger. Okay, so the true diehard Star Wars fans still aren't happy with The Last Jedi, Jedi for him killing off Luke and the trajectory of Rey as just star as just starters. At the at the time, you'll find other fans who say it helped set up a bigger creative challenge for up for upcoming The Rise of Skywalker. <sighs> challenge is 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 uh, is like a that's a that's an understatement. That's the understatement of of the history of of Star Wars. Of the, it's like they're calling this the Rise of Skywalker for clickbait. This is like, this is like, this is like a moment in 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 film history where here we are sitting, going, this is the last one. This is the last Star Wars movie, and it's like nobody cares. Everybody thinks that it's just going to be a pile of crap and. Where Ray is going to be overpowered as usual, and you know it's going to be a feminist show as usual with this, with all of this. That's all this is. It's all this that's been happening to this. It's just a complete turned on its head. This is not the. This is not the. This is not the 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 Skywalker saga. Don't call it that. Stop calling it the Skywalker saga. It's not the fucking Skywalker saga. It should have been. It could have been still, because that's what it's supposed to be. That's what Star Wars is supposed to be. It's.